We bless the name of the living God for your lives and we thank God for everyone and each one of you. You are very welcome. We have a word from the living God today that is titled, Keeping the Fire of God Upon Our Homes. Keeping the Fire of God Upon Our Homes. We are mainly going to dwell on the book of Job, Job chapter 1 from verse 1 to 12. Job chapter 1 from verse 1 to 12. It's more like a word of exhortation and uh, we will see what the Lord has for us unto his glory. So Job chapter 1 verse 1, keeping the fire of God upon our homes. It says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. This is very interesting because This man is located by God. And God has a report of the man. So shall it be unto your life that we might come to a point where we are located by God and the Lord's testimony of our lives is going to change lives. So we are being told that a man lived and his name was Job. And he was in a land called Uz. And Job was perfect. This is not a man given a description of Job's life. It was almighty God testifying of the life of this man. God said, this particular city of Chicago, there is a man, a woman, in the location of Edgewater, called so, so, and so. This man, this woman, looking from above, I can testify that this man, this woman, is perfect and upright. Not perfect and upright in the sight of man, but perfect and upright in the sight of Almighty God. It was the report of God concerning this man. He said this man was perfect he feared God and he tried as much as possible to stay away from evil. He tried as much as possible to stay away from what? From evil because he feared God. That is one thing. The fear of the Lord, when it is not present in a man's life, anything goes. When there is no fear of God in a man's life, anything goes. They can do evil and do beyond anything that you can imagine. Because nothing stops. He has no regard of man. He doesn't fear man. He has no respect of man. He sets himself as the judge. And whatever decision that he makes, that what stands. Because he doesn't consider God to be around. So every single decision, he said the woman was pleading that the man would judge on her behalf. But this man feared no God and has no regard to man. But it is because the woman keep coming and pressing to judge her case. That is the only time. So the only thing that he will say is that if I don't do something for this woman, she will make my life miserable. So I am going to make a decision. But it's not because I fear God. But it's because she's worrying me. That is the only reason. Job was a man perfect and upright in the sight of Almighty God. He hears the word of God, he trembles. He sees the behavior of people and he trembles because of what he knows. Of the word of God concerning behaviors and commandments and the laws, rules and regulations of almighty God. So he lives his life not according to the dictates of men, but according to the law that it is written in him. 
And he moved accordingly. That is the one that stands in the fear of Almighty God. He, he's living his life not to please people, but he's living to be approved in the sight of God. And period. That's it. So this man, Job, in verse 2 of Job 1, it says, This man, there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Seven sons and three daughters. So this man was a family man. He had a family. At least ten children in the house. How many do you have? Maybe you are alone. It doesn't matter. The Lord had located you. But when God located Job, the Lord also saw the blessings upon his life. He said he had sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. We can easily identify our lives with the life of such a person. Job was a, was a godly person and Job was a family man. He was a family man. Now, in verse 3, we are learning that Job's substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. You have to see, we have more information about the life of this man. This Job who fears God or who feared God and upright in the sight of God was blessed by God. Not only Job was blessed with children, but Job was also blessed with substance. With substance. And uh, you know, at that time, uh, your blessings, the riches were being counted according to the number of animals that you have. So Job, thousand of sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she axes, a very great household. Not only he was rich, but his household was kept in the knowledge and in the fear of Almighty God. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord had not destroyed this man's life. Can you possibly be a child of God and be rich? Can you possibly be rich, child of God, and be upright, doing the right thing in the sight of God? That you are not carried away by your substance. You are not carried away by your riches. It is not the love of what you have that drives your life. But it is what keeps you going that keeps you going. The almighty God that gives you the breath of life, waking you up every single morning, and when you are going to bed, you are not thinking of the amount of money that you have kept at the bank. But you are releasing your soul, your spirit, and your entire household into the hand of almighty God. And recognizing that Jesus indeed without you, I am nothing, we are nothing, and we can do nothing. This is not just information. This is what is destroying the life of so many. They think they are what they are and nothing is above them because of what they have. The stand that they have made of life. They stand on something and say that I am. And they are talking, putting their hands on their chest. Me, me. How can you say this to me? Who are you? Are you not taking air from almighty God? The Lord said that this man, upon the blessings of God on his life, and the substance to the extent that not Job was rich, but not, you know, Job was not just a rich man. Job was the greatest in the whole East. The whole East. When we call the club of millionaires, you stand up, even in your very humble suit and everything, but only God knows what is really happening in your heart when you are making the step forward. We call the club of billionaires and the millionaires will sit down and the billionaires will also be walking in. According to what they have, their stance and their respect, society had come to a point that we, we, we give honor to people according to their stance. But the man Job was not caught into that. 
God has an approval concerning his life. He had been approved in the sight of God because God has seen that this man, Job, is concerned about the people in that house. Raising people unto the glory of the living God. He said, I don't have any problem with Abraham because I know that Abraham shall cause his children after me. He shall cause his children after me. Job trained his household to know the Lord. So God considered Job's household to be great. And that makes him the greatest in the whole East. So far, this is what we have. Amen? The greatest in the whole East. So, in verse 4 of Job 1, the word says, his sons, remember he has seven of them, his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone his day. This is more like a birthday. Everyone his day. If it's not birthday, then we can consider that, oh, the family, there are ten of them, the seven sons. Everyone and each one of them will call party in his house according to the time. So, everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. You can really identify such a household, a great household. The family is so united and the children are so much together. Today, it is that one's turn and he will call everybody and everyone will come to that house and will call also the sisters. Probably the sisters are not married yet and they are still with the father. So the sisters will join the brothers in one of them's house. They will party, feast. The father is rich. Not only the father is rich, the father is considered to be the greatest in the east. So you can see the type of party. If it is today, different branches has been given connections and everything else, bribes. So even if they are making noise after 10 p.m., the police is not showing up. This has been going on and on and on and on. You can see God's testimony about the father and what the Lord is saying about the children. But watch this. In verse 5 of Job 1, it says, It was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, let's mark a pause here. You have to see what this man is doing. You can tell the mindset of the children. The children every day party. Every day party. Today this one is making party. Call everyone is coming in. Tomorrow is that one party over here. After the day, and it keeps going on. But you see, the man, the father, Job, knowing everything that the children were doing, he was very sensitive, very, very sensitive to the upcoming of these children. So you know what the father was doing, right? The Bible says that as he was seeing these children partying day after day, he will call the children. He will call the children unto himself, to his house. I mean, you have to watch the type of training that these children have received. These sons are not living in their father's house because we have read it together that they are having parties in their own house. Today, this one's house, we go there. So they are grown-ups. They are grown-ups and having their own lives. But yet... When the father had come to find out that the children keep on partying, every time that there is a party in one's house, the following day, the father will call them. He said, all of you, come around. Come to my house. The children will come 
And early in the morning, Job, he will rise up. He will rise up early in the morning and sanctify them. He did what? He sanctified them. And not only he was sanctifying them, he was also offering burnt offerings unto the Lord on behalf of these children. So this is like, it's really teaching us a lot. It's teaching us a lot because this man is considered to be one of the busiest man ever. That is what you might imagine. That, you know, the greatest in the East, so rich, you will be thinking of such an amazing schedule. But no, the man's schedule was all business with God. You have to see the type of training that he gave to these kids. These kids, they are grown in, in their own houses. He will call them, the children will come. He will call these children, every time they had a party, it had become like a custom in the family. And the children will run to their father's house. They know what the father was going to do. Because the father has been in that business since these kids were young. Standing in the gap and sanctifying them all the time. Standing in the gap and what? And sanctifying them all the time. So the children, they are grown. But yet, the tradition and the culture and the training is still moving on. They didn't say no to their father that now, daddy, we are grown. Let us live our own lives. This is a wisdom. This is why God is calling the household of Job to be a great household. There are characteristics that must be present in our household for God to see our household as what? As great. As great. The Lord is not talking about the, you know, the money that is flowing in the household. He's talking about the training, the behavior of these children. They are partying yet, but you can tell that these kids obey their parents. They're obeying their parents. He will call them, sanctify them. Why is Job doing this? So we are reading at the end of Job 1.5. It says, because Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned. It may be what? That my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And cursed God in their hearts. So it wasn't even about how the party went. He trained them and he trained them God way. So the children were not full of alcohol in that party. But Job is concerned because he said that even though they might not have done something that is obvious. But the heart, the heart, the sin that is in the heart of these children. So probably they have cursed God in their behaviors. They have probably said something, did something, behave a way that is going to transgress the commandment of Almighty God. This is the reason why Job was calling them in his house. Every time that these kids will party and sanctify them, so he was watching over the lives of these kids. We are children of our parents. And let me tell you, you will always be the little one of your mother, no matter how old are you. But it takes a heart of understanding. And that is not built carelessly. Because a parent that has the wisdom to have the children in mind... Constantly. What is this sanctification that we are talking about here? Sanctifying them. Waking up early in the morning. Early in the morning and offering burnt, burnt offering in the sight of God. Is it not the prayers that we are praying over our children? That this is it. This is it. Being sensitive and waking early in the morning and bringing the case before God, before Almighty God. We are not talking about the case that are at home. The ones that are at home, you might be mindful of them. But what about the ones that are already in their marriages? It is the responsibility of the parents. 
to be calling upon heaven, upon you know, onto your children's life every single day. Oh Lord, keep them. Oh Lord, watch over them. And you keep that. That is, I said, there is a covenant. There are certain prayers that somebody, someone cannot pray that prayer for you. Because the covenant that binds God to the parents, to the children, it is irreplaceable. Can't replace that with anyone. That is why when you were a child, your behavior with your parents must be right. They cannot affect our marriages negatively, but the honor that is due to them must be given. No matter how grown you are and how much riches you have, somebody like Job, the man must just be standing, living his life and be thinking that <laughs> inheritances are there. These kids, they, they will not be worried about anything in life. Everything they need is already provided. But yet, it wasn't the mindset. Job have come to understood that, that, that there is more into life than the material things that we can give to these kids. This is what is called building our households. Being mindful of our generations to come. When they have been released into life, oh my goodness, you look at the type of life that is going on. Every one of them today, when the kids are born, we wonder the outcome of tomorrow. Look at where the world is going today. You look at your sons, your daughters, and that you love them so much. And with everything that is going, going on out there, the training that you did not even give them at home, the next thing you know, it's a whole lot. But they will have to leave the house and go to the colleges. One day they have to be released into life. We cannot be after them uh, babysitting them all the time. So the best way is to commit them into the hand of the one that can take care of them. So much that we are working for them. We are not saying that inheritances are not good. You have to leave something. He said, good man, leave it inheritance for his children's children. So work. Have enough for yourself. Have enough for your children. Have enough for your children's children. It is obvious. And the Lord is going to bless you for that. But there are certain things that cannot be purchased with money. They cannot be purchased with money. The training and the knowledge and the fear of the living God must be settled in the heart of these children. If their hearts are settled on the money, that's it. They are going to be destroyed. So, these kids, Job was constantly before the Lord upon the children. And it was said here at the end of Job 1.5, he said, Thou did Job continually. Meaning that it was Job's habit to be standing in the gap for his children all the time. It was Job's habit to be calling upon the name of the, of the Lord upon his children all the time. The parents must learn to call on God for their children, no matter how grown up they are. Life challenges does not respect age. Babies have their problems as the oldest one also have this. But having the right mindset and be doing the right thing and it's all about, it's, this is not physical thing, it's, it's internal thing. It is the heart beat where the, the heart is beating. Is it beating towards God or is beating towards everything that is displayed out there? And he was doing this constantly. We are talking about how to keep the fire of God upon our homes. Upon our homes. So, this is the man Job. In verse 6 to 7 of Job 1, it says... Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Hallelujah. 
We can't talk about human beings without talking about Satan. Amen? I said the prince of this world. So the world where the children of God are, Jesus prayed that prayer in John 17. Father, my work is done. I'm coming. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but they are in the world, but they are not from the world, so keep them away from the evil one. So the world has someone that is called Satan, also known as evil one. So, at this stage, when the children of God are present before the Lord, Satan also showed up. He came. And the Lord said unto Satan, we thank God, God have seen him. He said unto Satan, Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Hallelujah. Satan is a busy guy. This guy is restless. Oh. <laughs> you see the characteristic of this man. God asked him, Satan, where are you coming from? He said, God, you know me. <laughs> and you know the type of assignment upon my life. I have been busy. Busy visiting people's homes. So going up and down. Moving from one house to another. For what purpose? Moving from one house to another. In case you have not come to know this, Satan is the busiest body. Busiest body ever. Why is that? God is settled. And the Lord, settlement is all about the omnipotency of God. The omniscience God. <laughs> you see, so he doesn't need to be struggled to know and control all around him. But Satan is not like that. And let me say this. Satan is a created being. He cannot be in two places at the same time. Even though he is a spirit. We're going to find out so much from his own mouth. He cannot be. If he wants to know what is happening there, he has to go there by himself or have somebody there to report to him. That is Satan. But the God that you serve, the God that you know, the almighty God that you serve does not need to move to know what is going on. Because he has known all that is yet to come before it is implemented. I am moving up and down. Restless life. Restless life. That is why the worshippers of Satan are also restless. They are busy not knowing what to do. So watch this. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 to 9. 1 Peter 5, 6 to 9. The word of advice to us is this. Because of what the enemy is doing, Satan has a great network because of his nature. He is not omnipresent being. He has to be there by himself to know. So as a result of that, he had trained disciples, his own worshipers. He has such an amazing network. And the network of Satan, we fight not against the flesh and blood, but the principalities and the powers, the dominions and the truths, the rulers of darkness of this world. All the witches and the, all the occult group and the shrines and fetish priests and all that. They are all part of the satanic network. They have to report to him. Otherwise, their master will be too restless. They have to tell him what is going on. Satan do not have any idea of what is going to happen to you tomorrow. He has no clue of future. You know why? Because if only he had an idea of what is to come, he wouldn't have incited people to crucify Jesus when it was coming upon him, himself. And so much. If he knew that the gallop that was set for Mordecai was going to be used on him and himself, he wouldn't have done it. And you can see on and on and on and on. Satan has no clue of your life. 
He has, he has no idea of what you are thinking. But be careful because he has been here for long. So if not anything, he said the wisdom of the old is the gray hair. So respect them. They have been around for some time. So if not anything, events and happiness of life had taught them. He knows things by experience. And when he sees you starting something, if you don't say it, Satan has no clue. He has no idea. It's only when he hears or one of his agents will hear and report to him, he will not know. He will not know. That is the characteristic of Satan. We are not afraid of him. Hallelujah. We are not. Absolutely not. Because we know him and we know the way he works. So this Peter, 1 Peter 5, 6 to 9 says, Children of God, knowing everything that we have talked about, your responsibility and to have a home burning with the fire of the living God, humble yourselves, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Hallelujah. Time is everything. Time is everything. The moment that you know that you have come under the umbrella of Christ, please don't run. If there is any run to run, it's a race of life. And that run, it's not just running to run a race. It's a marathon run. It's a race marathon run. So you have to run with wisdom. You have to run with wisdom. So you come in humility under the mighty hand of the living God and be doing what the Lord is asking you to do. Your today must be slow, but tomorrow the Lord might renew your strength and to be accelerating in the race. The next thing you know, down the road, when people were looking at you and be thinking that there can never be anything coming from Nazareth, a time comes that they said, come and see. Come and what? Come and see. Come and see. Simply because of what the Lord had made of you. So it's a matter of time. When you move with God, it's a matter of what? Time. Continue doing the right thing. Continue doing the right thing. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of the living God. Verse 7 of 1 Peter 5. He said, In that doings, casting all your cares upon God, casting all your cares upon Almighty God, mm. for He cared for you. Before a concern come to be a concern, the Lord had already made a provision. Let me say this again. Almighty God that put you here, he knows the reason why he put you here. If God sent you, he had a provision also made available. So, the cares of our lives, I don't have this, and how is this going to be? And how can I do this? And how God said that is none of your responsibility. You just live today and be doing the right thing in my sight and allow me to be God. Is it not what he says in Philippians 4, 6 and 7? He said, be careful for nothing. So don't worry about anything. But in all things, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord that surpasses understanding shall keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. Release your mind and the heart unto him. The problems that are coming, that is not what is going to bring you down. Because the problems, they will come to find God in you. The problems will come to find peace of God in you. So we are not moved by the problems. You know why? It is because we cast our curse upon the Lord. And we know that he's able to handle things. And he will. You just watch it. How many times you have been going through situations and problems. 
how many times you have been praying to God to help you in those cases. And the Lord came and he helped you. So how come that every time you have new one, we act like if we have never come across problems? But yet, the Lord has been in business of delivering us all the time. It is time for us to be established in the assurance and in the faith of Almighty God. So that we will know that everything that comes out of our lives, God shall take glory. It's a fact. Keeping the fire of God upon our household. There are houses, the cares are so much. The problems in the house, the problems that are not even coming, we create them. We create them upon ourselves. Anxiousness, anxiety, con contention and strife, you know, miscontentment, and on and on and on and on. And we keep chasing stuff. Latest of the latest. But they don't know that the, before the latest count, another latest one is also coming. And you keep living your life that way. In the sight of people, my mom was always telling me, <laughs> when I was a little guy, you know, school, university, he said, my son, concentrate on your studies. Focus. Because I am grown up and I have known one thing about life. You see, women, women that are allowing so many to drop out of school. He said, the, 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 the most beauteous ones are yet to be born. Take your time, study. You will come to find out the beauty. Haven't you seen my wife? Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Yes. If I was to rush, I would have taken a monkey with me and then the next thing you know. So, you know, being focused and doing things without stress and knowing what to do at the right time. The Lord said, no need to stress yourself and be putting things upon your life that are not necessary. So, release yourself unto the mighty hand of the living God. Verse 8, be sober. Be sober. Verse 8 of 1 Peter 5. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil... As a rolling lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You know what is happening here? Satan, where are you coming from? I am coming from and to of the earth. I have been moving around restless, you know, restlessly, visiting homes, seeking to cause problems in the house. This is what the enemy is moving around doing. A child of God, a godly home must be sensitive to this. He said resist him because this is the reason why they are so much afflicted in the world out there. That tack, tack. I don't want anything. I want divorce. I want divorce. I do not want anything. I want divorce. It's not about what you want. It is what the enemy has done in your home. It's what the enemy has done. He had you captured. He had captured your mind and your heart. So the only thing that remains is full destruction. That is the only thing that remains. And you are full into that. He said, I have the custody of the children. You have nothing. You have nothing. You yourself, you are broken. Your husband is broken. Children are broken. Everything of you is broken. The Lord said, watch these things. Resist the devil steadfastly because it is his assignment to visit homes and cause havoc. Thank you, Lord. So in Job 1.8, hearing the answer that Job gave, Lord, you know me. I have been busy. God said unto Satan. He said, Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and an upright man. One that feared God and eschewed evil. Hallelujah. I wish that the Lord would say the same thing about me. 
the type of life that we are living, it's such an amazing honor for God to be looking onto your home. The city where you are living, locating your home and locating you. And be calling Satan, who is the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12, you hear Satan being called the accuser of the brethren. So this is the man that is always pointing figure. God, have you seen? Uh -huh. This one says, she's your daughter. Is she not the one that is singing in the choir? And when she sings, oh, the voice, look at what she's doing. With that boyfriend that used the, look, she's your daughter. Is this, this one is one of your, what about that one over there? Ah, uh, he said, who, Pastor Charles? Ah, uh, he's the man that stands at the pulpit over there every Sunday. Have you seen him, what he's doing? Look at the way he's behaving with the wife. Right there in that house when no one is there. Have you seen that man? This is the one that you consider to be your servant. But God also looked and found Job and said, Satan, have you also seen, have you seen this man, Job? The Job, the one that is just right there in the land of Uz. Have you seen his home? Have you seen his behavior? Have you seen how upright he is? Let's hear Job. And let's also hear what Satan has to say. Have you seen Job? Then in verse 9 of Job 1, Satan answered God's question. Satan answered God. He said, God, do Job fear you for naught? Meaning that, do Job fear you for nothing? Job doesn't fear you for nothing. Job fears you because God that has not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side that has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Hallelujah. This is not the testimony of God, of Job. This is the testimony of Satan about Job. Amen? So, let me tell you, Satan is a liar. He lies all the time, but he cannot lie before God. He cannot lie before God. So, when he was before the Lord, Satan said, he made a statement of what he could see on Job. On Job's house. Because he has been checking Job for a long time. Have you considered Job? <laughs> God, you don't need me. You don't need to ask me that question. I have been considering him and over considering him. But this is what I saw that you have done upon this man's life. And this is something that everyone and each one of us, we have to take note Every child of God, there is a protection, three protections that are settled upon the life of every single child of God. And it is coming out of the mouth of Satan. Satan said, God, you have made a hedge about Job. Let me tell you, as much as you might not believe what God has done for you, I want you to know that there is a spiritual hedge around you. There is a hedge that is built by God around your life, yourself. It's a fact. If Satan wants to break that hedge, he has to seek permission from God. The first protection of God upon our lives is a hedge around you. 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 So the witches of your families, the wizard and the sorceress, they that are taking you to the shrines, they that are taking you to the altars of the devil, until the Lord permit it, it shall never, ever, ever, ever. They can't. It's a hedge from Almighty God. That hedge is upon you, yourself. 
That is number one hedge. Number two hedge, he said, you have built also an hedge about his house. Hallelujah. About his house. So number one hedge is yourself. Number two hedge is what is your children. Your children, your children. Continue lifting these children before Almighty God. Continue praying to God about your children. There is already a hedge from the Lord around these children. Until God permits it, Satan has no power over these children. No power. No power. So it's like every time that Job will wake up in the morning, this hedge is already there. Job will wake up, wake up in the morning, early in the morning, and be offering, you know, bench offering before the Lord. What is he doing? He's praying, Lord, my son, Lord, my daughter, Lord, my firstborn, Lord, this one, Lord, and he keep mentioning. <laughs> Fire is constantly around that hedge. Fire is constantly around that hedge to keep the fire burning constantly upon the life of our children. This is not either you want it or not. This is something that God does not ask for your approval before he does it. The protection of the Lord upon your life and upon your children is something that comes from God. Out of his goodness and his grace. Amen. And then the last hedge around the house of the believer. He said that you have also built a hedge about all that he had on every side. All that he had on every side. Don't worry about your bank account. The enemy cannot touch it. Don't worry about your substance out there. The enemy cannot touch it. You continue worrying about your fellowship with God and keep on increasing the fire around the protection. And you can see that the Lord God can keep you going. So it's amazing and extremely comfortable to see what the Lord God has done. A hedge upon my life, a hedge upon my house, my children, my wife, they are, they, they are protected and also a hedge around everything that I do. The house that I built, the money I have in the bank, the job that I'm doing, everything that I have, there is a hedge of God around it and the enemy cannot touch it. A hedge, protection. This is the testimony of Satan about what God has done. And you have blessed this man, Job. So, we are closing just right here. Job 1, 10 to 12. Let me read from verse 11 to 12. It says, <laughs> ah, But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he had, and he will curse thee to thy face. So this is what permission is all about. Satan was like, God, if you really want to know if Job loves you, then let me go through this hedge. Open the hedge for me. Let me go in. Then we will find out. We all know the story about Job. Job, he didn't give up. Job's heart was not about the money. Job's heart was not about the blessings of God upon his life. Job's heart was after the heart of God. Because God said, okay, listen to the question, I mean the permission that Satan was seeking from God concerning Job. Satan said to God, put forth thy hand and touch all that he had and he will curse thee. That is the protection number three about his substance. The moment that God opened that door, Satan went ahead and destroyed everything that Job had. Everything. It is to tell you, unless the Lord gives permission, Satan has no right. He cannot. Unless you are not. You know, there is something we have to be careful, by the way, when we are making such a statement. Either God gives the permission or you break the hedge. Because if you break the hedge, the serpent shall bite. Ecclesiastics. You break the hedge, the serpent shall bite. So as far as you remain faithful and continuously doing what the Lord has called you to do and keeping the fire burning 
around your house, you are okay. If there is anything that he wants, he has to go and seek permission. Today, permission is not granted. Permission is what? It's not granted. It's not granted. But when the Lord gave permission, he went in. First, permission about his substance. Job lost everything. All the thousands of sheep and all the 500 and all those things, camels. He lost everything. He lost everything. The second time he comes in, he said, give me permission to the second hedge, which is around his house. What did he do? He came in, killed all his children. He killed all the children and left the woman. Why he didn't kill the woman? Because that woman would be <laughs> very needful. Satan can use that woman. And we could see it. That Satan used that woman so much. So Satan said, okay, you, don't worry. <laughs> Let me keep you alive. And the woman was knocking and knocking and knocking upon Job's life. Curse this God and let's move on. Who, are this, who is this God that you keep, you know, hanging on him? And we are so poor now and things, look at you. And nothing is working and all that. And That was the reason why Job kept that woman. So, in case you have a nagging woman, you know where she's coming from. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's close everything here. So, that is exactly that which Satan did. He said, all that God gave him the permission, behold, Verse 12 of Job 1. Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and he went and did everything that I told you. Scattering his substance, killing everybody in the house. Without the permission, he can do nothing. Without the permission from God or without you breaking the hedge, Satan has no power over your household. We have been taught today about how to keep the fire burning upon our homes. We have been taught to keep the fire of God upon our homes. What are you coming from, Satan? Up and down. Have you considered Job? How can I consider Job? There is always fire burning around the house of Job. If you want me to go in there, remove the hedge and let me go in and destroy. And we all know that when God find out that Job's heart was not after the blessings that he blessed him with, but it was genuinely from the heart love, the Lord restored Job. Double of all that he had lost. I pray for somebody here. I pray for someone here. Anything that you have lost unto the devil. Today, as you have come to find out what the Lord has done for you. Be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you.